The Kiwis march again, this time the 14th Fighter Squadron heading for Japan. They say a formal farewell to Auckland by marching down Queen Street. And for men whose job is to fly and service planes, they turn on an impressive parade. In Japan, they'll join the 2nd NZDF Brigade as part of the British Commonwealth Occupational Forces. To take them to Japan is the light fleet carrier HMS Glory. Glory has already had Japanese contacts, for aboard her, General Imamura signed the surrender of the Japanese Southeast Army. The 14th Squadron is taking with it everything it needs, from cauliflowers to corsairs. These corsairs of the RNZAF have been brought across from Hobsonville and are being made secure for the trip. Once again, New Zealanders say goodbye to their native land. Again, they have a job to do, helping to secure the peace. But this time, it's not wholly unpleasant. In their six months in Japan, they'll see strange sights and interesting places. The tigers are the pride of Wellington Zoo. Though Wellington is a long way from India, tigers do well here, and their population is constantly increasing. The latest mother is Yvonne, a four-year-old tigress who came from India. And these are her children, Johnny and Daisy. There were four cubs, but Yvonne accidentally smothered two. A near relation has come to call. The family resemblance is quite striking. Well, it's time to be heading back to the jungle. In the local baths at Karori, youngsters learn their first swimming steps under ideal conditions. In a smaller bath beside the main bath, older swimmers help the youngsters gain confidence in the water. And this community effort makes swimming fun for both. The youngsters have something to work up to too. Their teachers draw a large gallery when they turn on a display of fancy swimming that shows their grace and skill in the water. In the radio section of the Dominion Physical Laboratory at Lower Hutt, these radio engineers are building equipment to be used in meteorological work. Three and a half years ago, wartime problems brought a huge expansion to this laboratory, making it today an up-to-the-minute center for scientific research. Now they work on post-war equipment for developing industry, transport and communications. Here, radar equipment, once used for coastal defense in the Pacific, is being modified to track weather balloons as they climb 50,000 feet into the stratosphere. Airways pilots will need all the information such equipment can gather. A new development in magnetizing radio speakers is being tried out. To the 160 engineers and physicists working here, industry daily brings many problems. From their own library, they can get information, and the library itself is available to industry. Special equipment is designed in their own drafting rooms. Problems are first solved on paper. The problem on paper is transferred to the machine shops for experimental construction. In the work of construction, fine degree accuracy is the keynote. This lead screw was machined out of solid metal, hardened and ground and tested for accuracy to one-tenth of a thousandth of an inch. 
Testing and checking equipment already in commercial use is part of the work of this laboratory. This girl is checking gauges used by the Marine Department. From industry and government departments come many problems to this laboratory, established by the government to aid the development of New Zealand. When it comes to designing and making glass apparatus of strange shapes for strange uses, the laboratory can tackle this too. Making this was just a routine problem. Metal testing equipment was designed and built in the laboratory. This machine is testing the strength of a piece of steel by exerting a pull on it of 20,000 pounds to the square inch. When a milk department's temperature recorder breaks down, this is the only place in New Zealand where it can be fixed. Today, thanks to the work of this Dominion Laboratory at Lower Hutt, science is backing industrial progress. Through this laboratory, science and industry are working together.